Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yenatas Mai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manol Vistam Stapti Tam Yenabutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Patati Kam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Sri Rupam Sagaja Tam Sahagana Ragana Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Visha Kam Vitam Sja <coughs> Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Vutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve. Gordavani Pichari Nani Rishisha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satari Nay. Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Opesha Gopigakanta, Radhakanta Namostate, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavane Swari, Vishavanu Siti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. Vanchakopa, Tarugascha, Kripa Sindhu, Bhavancha, Petitanam, Bhavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namahona Maha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakti Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this verse is from the ninth chapter, and it's exclusively has to do with the topic of faith. So we'll begin. Astrada danam purusham dharma syasya parantapa aprapyamam nivartante mrityar samsara vartmani. Translation, those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of the enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. Srila Prabhupada's purport, please follow closely because it, it gets a little technical, not technical, but every part of this purport supports the whole process of understanding the principle of faith. The faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotional service. That is the purport of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of Vedic literature from great personalities, still have no faith in God. They are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is a most important factor for the progress in Krishna consciousness. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that faith is the complete conviction that serving, that simply by serving the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, one can achieve all perfection. That is real faith. As stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 4.31-14, Yata Taya Mula Nishesh Chene Nam Tripyanti Sakanda Bujo Bhak Sakaha Rano Parach Cha Yarendriyanam Tataiva Sarvahanam Achuteja. By giving water to the root of the tree, one satisfies its branches, twigs, and leaves. And by supplying food to the stomach, one satisfies all the senses of the body. Similarly, by engaging in transcendental service of the Lord, one can automatically satisfy all the demigods and all living entities. Therefore, after reading Bhagavad Gita, one should promptly come to the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. One should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead. If one is convinced of this philosophy of life, that is faith. <clears throat> now, the development of faith is the process of Krishna consciousness. There are three divisions of Krishna conscious men. And the third class are those who have no faith. Even if they are officially engaged in devotional service, they cannot achieve the highest perfectional stage. Most probably they will slip after some time. 
they, be, they may become engaged, but because they have a complete conviction and faith, it is very difficult for them to continue in Krishna consciousness. We have practical experience in discharging our missionary activities that some people come and apply themselves to Krishna consciousness with some hidden motive. And as soon as they are economically a little well situated, they give up this process and take to their old ways again. It is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. As far as development of faith is concerned, one who is well versed in the literatures of devotional service and has attained the advanced, who has attained the stage of firm faith is called a person in Krishna consciousness, first class person in Krishna consciousness. And in the second class, there are those who are not very advanced in understanding devotional scriptures, but who automatically have faith, firm faith that Krishna bhakti or service to Krishna is the best course and so in good faith they have taken it up. <clears throat> Thus they are superior to the third class who have neither perfect knowledge of the scriptures nor good faith, but by association and simply simplicity they are trying to follow. The third class person Krishna consciousness may fall down, but when one is in second class he does not fall down. And for the first class person in Krishna consciousness, there's no chance of falling down. One in first class will surely make progress and achieve the result at the end. As far as the third class person in Krishna consciousness is concerned, although he has convict faith and conviction that devotional service of Krishna is very good, he has not yet gained adequate knowledge of Krishna through the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Sometimes these third class persons in Krishna consciousness have some tendency towards karma yoga or jnana yoga. And sometimes they are disturbed, but as soon as the infection of karma yoga or jnana yoga is vanquished, they become second class or first class persons in Krishna consciousness. Faith in Krishna is also divided into three stages as described in Srimad Bhagavatam. First class att attachment, second class attachment, and third class attachment are also explained in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto. Those who have no faith even after hearing about Krishna and the excellence of devotional service who think that it is simply eulogy find the path very difficult even if they are supposedly engaged in devotional service. For them, there is very little hope of gaining perfection. Thus, faith is very important in the discharge of devotional service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So here, something that is often spoken about but never really discussed is the principle of faith. Um, we live basically, or we go on in life, in all areas of life based on faith. We have faith that, you know, that the sun is gonna rise every day. Uh, when we, uh, fly in an airplane. We have faith in the pilot will get us there, even though we don't know who he is, never met him, have no knowledge. But because we have faith in the airlines, which are authorized, we automatically can accept that we will get there. So we go based on that faith. We develop into a relationship with another person. We develop some uh, knowledge of that the other person and based on that knowledge we develop that the, that relationship will work because we have faith based on that little knowledge we have from that person and faith is also sometimes inspired by hope that the positive thinking towards the the, the ultimate goal helps to inspire the faith 
But faith cannot really be blind, nor can it be uh, weak. It has to be solid and fixed. And here we saw the three categories of living entities who um, exhibit faith in, in different levels. <clears throat> Many times people come to Krishna consciousness because they are inspired by the externals, the, uh, the whole presentation of how Krishna consciousness works, the newness of it, the, uh, the, the temples, the exteriors, the, the way things are uh, uh, seen. They get a little inspired and then they come, they try it. And then, but because they don't really develop either enough association or take the time to understand their actual position through scriptural knowledge, um, they lose faith or they can't keep any kind of faith or their faith doesn't grow in any way. And they become official in everything they do. And it says here, there are some, many times they're motivated by Karma yoga and jnana yoga. And karma yoga simply means they look for some, some results for everything they do, some personal results. Jnana yoga looks, they're looking for results on the subtle platform, karma yoga on the gross platform. So uh, these persons, <clears throat> and Krishna speaks about this in the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter, that four kinds of people come to me the, those who are in distress, those who are in need of uh, material gain, those who are inquisitive, and those who are seeking the absolute truth. The first two come by material desires. And because they come by material desires, if they don't give up, or not give up, but come to a higher understanding of devotional service, that it's meant to purify the heart and bring one to realization of God. Um, they stay in that category of looking for the benefits that they came from. And Krishna consciousness can do that. It will relieve material distress. It will also sometimes bring economic gain. Many times it happens like that. And sometimes when these people achieve these things, they again, leave the process and go back to their old ways like that because they haven't understood what is the actual goal <clears throat> they look for everything in terms of the results of their activities so these um these persons can't stay so the second class person has a little bit of knowledge and he also has association um a the third class person if he comes in contact with the person who sp speaks against Krishna consciousness and is a little bit intelligent on how to present things, the third class person becomes uh, discouraged and loses faith and sometimes goes away because of that wrong association. The second class person will hear persons speak against the process of devotional service, but be and they not, may not be able to present arguments in opposition of these challenges, but they don't go away. Um, they don't have the knowledge to defeat the person, but at the same time, they have enough faith to stay in the process. That's many of us, but the first class person, he can defeat all the opposing uh, statements and at the same time present the uh, ultimate principle and uh, stay fixed in Krishna consciousness. So knowledge is the concomitant factor, which is the foundation for understanding the activities of devotional service, why we do what we do and what is the results of doing what we're doing, and what is the short term and ultimately long term benefit. So that knowledge has to be there. Therefore, we have to study um, certain books that to give that and the main book for that two, there's two books for that and that is Bhagavad Gita and Nectar of Devotion Nectar of Devotion <clears throat> aligns the whole process of Bhakti Yoga in a very systematic way 
taking it from the very simple uh, beginning of devotional service of the benefits or the elements that make up devotional service in practice all the way up to spontaneous uh, loving devotional service. So uh, that book is a must. It's not optional. You must read that book. You must also have a working understanding. <clears throat> and that, that requirement, at least for the first 19 chapters, uh, those first 19 chapters are summarizes the whole process of devotional service, giving nice examples in a very scientific way. It's Rupa Goswami's scientific presentation on, these, on the process of pure devotional service. Even if we don't go beyond the first 19 chapters, <clears throat> that's only the first section. There are four sections, they're called waves. The ocean, nectar of devotion is the, the nectar of the devotional ocean. And as in the ocean, there are waves. There's the eastern wave, the western wave, the southern wave, and the northern wave. The first wave, I believe, is the eastern wave. And there's those 19 chapters. When we understand, at least get a working knowledge of those 19 chapters, we can remain very strong in our practice of devotional service. If you want to go beyond, then you get into some of the qualities of Krishna and some of the more intricate moods that play out in our interaction in devotional service, all the way up to the rasas and what is rasa, what is not rasa. <clears throat> so Prabhupada, in speaking to us, he said, nectar of devotion, read it once, read it twice, read it thrice. And that's a direct quote explaining how important it is to know this particular scripture. Uh, it's an incarnation of Srimati Radharani, who is Bhakti Devi herself. Rupa Goswami is an intimate associate of Srimati Radharani. He was blessed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly to speak the process of devotional service because he had heard from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at, at Prayag for 10 consecutive days, many hours every day. He sat and Lord Chaitanya explained to him the entire process of devotional service. So faith is very important. Faith is supported by knowledge. Faith is supported by good association. Wrong association can destroy one's faith. And therefore it's very um, important. When uh, Sanatan Goswami asked uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is the first duty of a devotee? He said, Asat Sangha Tayaga a Vaishnava Achar. Asat, asat means material. Asat Sangha, give up the materialistic association. A Vaishnava Achar, one should take to the association of Vaishnava. So Lord Chaitanya explained that this is the first business to give up the association of non devotees and take to the association of devotees. And uh, that requires explanation in terms of detail. What does it mean to associate? And how do we associate with devotees? There's different ways to associate. There's different types of devotees and how those different types interact with each other and which actually plays out with beneficial association. Yet the most, the most important thing is to avoid non-devotee association, especially those who are not religious or pious who are engaged in materialistic activities for economic gain and for sense gratification, and who have no uh, connection with anything religious or spiritual. Those persons very easily can, when they speak, they speak simply about um, negativity and as they experience it in, in the, towards uh, anything devotional like that. So faith, if our faith is tender, tender means simple, like the faith of a child, then it can be easily and readily removed by wrong association. But so therefore one, to, where one strengthens their faith by association and by knowledge. 
Faith is also strengthened by the experiences we have in devotional service. When we practice the process nicely, when we get realization on the process, when we experience the happiness of devotional service, then our faith also gradually increases like that. Faith, faith up to its highest point is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in, uh, in the sixth chapter, verse number 20 through 23. It's four verses in one. I think it's important that we hear this verse because it talks about faith in its ultimate principle. So maybe you can turn to that verse. It's sixth chapter of the Gita. Verse number 20, make that, it's, and then I'll read the section, it's four verses, I think, in one. Verse number 20. Yeah, so we'll get down to the, down to the uh, translation. Uh, and this, so this is this is perfect faith. This uh, this is the highest. So we're just giving this understanding. In the stage of perfection called trance or samadhi, one's mind is completely restrained from material mental activities by practice of yoga. This perfection is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and rejoice and relish in the self. In that joyous state. One is situated in boundless transcendental happiness, realized through transcendental establish, senses, established thus one never departs from the truth. And upon gaining this, he thinks there is no greater gain. And here's the last part. Being situated in such position, one is never shaken, even in the midst of greatest difficult. That is indeed actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. So what this is saying that when one is on that platform, even if there's difficulties, even if there's challenges, even if there's life-threatening situations, a person's faith in the, both the process and in the execution of the process is strong, solid, fixed, like that. You saw the, the highest example we have in Srimad Bhagavatam is Prahlad Maharaj. Although he was being threatened, harassed, and eventually uh, his father tried to kill him in so many ways, he never deviated from his absorption on Krishna. And because he had such strong faith and absorption in Krishna, nothing could harm him. Krishna gave him full protection by the strength of his absorption based on his faith in the Lord. So that's the highest. So, um, one has to uh, understand that this process of devotional service moves one along from stage to stage by the principle of faith. Faith is very, very important like that. And, uh, and so sometimes we see devotees, they may have faith in devotional service, but they don't have faith that they can actually achieve perfection in devotional service. They, for whatever reasons, they have a low uh, evaluation of their own uh, abilities. Maybe it's due to experiences. And they think, well, you know, I'm a devotee, but I'll never be a, a great devotee. And they think like that. And then they, or else they think, well, you know, I can't really make an advancement. I've been trying and then nothing's happening. Um, this kind of th thought process uh, uh, leaves out the, the Krishna factor because Krishna is the person that makes one successful in devotional service, the, the element of mercy, his mercy. And without, without his mercy, we can't make any advancement. But then when full mercy is available, one can come to the highest stage of perfection. So the idea is that, okay, looking at myself, I can't do it, but by the mercy of Krishna, I can do it. Yeah, by the mercy of Krishna, I can do it. Uh, let me 
see, I'm having some trouble here with my computer again. Just give me a minute. Uh, my computer is acting up here. Okay, some problem here with this plug, it's not staying in. All right, I think, so these are some points on faith. So there is faith in the process, faith in my ability to execute the process and ultimately faith in Krishna. <laughs> so we have to be, uh, we have to understand how to get faith in all these three categories. We may have faith in the process and faith in Krishna, not faith in ourself. We have maybe we may have too much faith in ourself, but we somehow neglect the faith that comes by way of the mercy of Krishna. So we we'll learn to balance that out. And what helps to balance that out or give it support is scriptural knowledge, which is mentioned here also that we have to have knowledge of the scriptures because knowledge of the scriptures, when Maya attacks, if we don't have knowledge of the philosophy, we will get confused, maybe feel defeated, sometimes go away or give up our service, whatever. But um, one who is fixed in knowledge can understand that, you know, the material energy is there. It's offering some challenges, some reversals of happening, something material is, is coming into my life, which is disturbing my execution of devotional service. I give more importance to that material disruption than my practice of devotional service. I've seen that many times. People give up their devotional service in order to somehow spend more time trying to solve their material problems, which may come and which may seem very important to them. So this faith is important. And real faith is called strada. Strada means that faith which is not broken and by any situation like that. And that faith is really strengthened uh, mostly through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That will give us the strength and the faith to push on despite the difficulties that we may encounter by the external energy or might be even our own lack of uh, abilities or own lack of confidence like that. So this is a big subject. <laughs> it's actually here as Prabhupada ends the purport in 9.3 again, he says that uh, so faith ultimately is the is the essential principle in devotional service. Okay, so we can stop there and uh, see if there's any comments or questions. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, very nice topic and uh, very essential uh, topic, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for explaining in detail. Um, Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. And I request devotees, if they have any questions or comments um, or realizations, um, they can go ahead, please. And you can type in the chat window also if you want to. Thank you. There's a statement in Christianity. It says that faith is the evidence 
of things unseen and the proof of things yet to come. Mm -hmm. Interesting statement. The evidence of things unseen and the proof of things yet to come. Mm -hmm. So that's a very powerful statement. It's coming from the Christian tradition. If you have faith, that's the proof that you will succeed. If you have faith, it is the, it is the evidence that whatever you're trying to achieve will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice statement. That's from the Bible, I believe. Guru Maharaj, Mohanas Ni Radha Mataji have a question, uh, has a question. Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances, always to Srila Prabhupada. Can we change our appearance and how others see us through faith? Can we change our appearance? That appearance. Change our appearance. So what does that mean exactly? And how others see us through faith? Uh, can we change the way we present ourselves? Yeah, I think and so. how other people see us through faith. Yeah, for sure. Faith actually takes hold within everything you do and your own expression. You can see if a person has faith, they exhibit a certain characteristic. They are not deviated from their activities and they. Uh, enjoy the activities that they perform in devotional service. Yeah, people will see you one way or the other. Yeah, you can change your appearance, you can change how people see you. But that's not the motivation for faith, it's just one of the uh, results or the factors that come by way of having faith, yeah. Actually, Guru Maharaj, I was thinking like that because sometimes people say to me that I, uh, mm, they, they see me in a way that they start to be aggressive or they uh, see in me um, something what is their mirror. And then uh, they actually act to me, towards me aggressive but it's their own um, maybe disability or or some um, I don't know discomfort or something like that yeah that will happen people can push their own negativity on you and think it's coming from you mm -hmm. they say the, the mind is a mirror reflects inside what's out with flex outside what is already inside like that but then again you have to see if there's something about you that's causing them to act like that that's another side and then you have to examine your own self and see if you're causing people to be like that <clears throat> so it's either coming from them or coming for you or coming to do the situation to that a particular situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I will so you have to, to a little self analysis there. Mm -hmm. you. you want to act in such a way that people. Uh, cannot find fault in you that's the that's the idea if our activities are proper then then even if people find fault with us it's their problem but if our activities are not proper or our attitude is not proper 
then may we might be inspiring negativity coming from others like that. So best to start with yourself and, and take evaluation of how you are affecting other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always try to see other people in a good light, in a positive way, what is good in them. And if they try to tell me something aggressive, then I just stay humble and don't argue with them. I accept it. Why would people be aggressive towards you? What is what is what is wrong with you? What is wrong with them? What is the situation? Why is it happening? There's something there that's not right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens somehow regularly to me. I don't know. Something well, is wrong there. If you associate with devotees, it won't be like that. If you associate with non-devotees, there is a chance that it will it'll be like that. It's also with devotees. We live door to door and it happens regularly like this. Hmm. Then you have to, all right, what you can say to the devotees is that you say, all right, what is it about me that's causing you disturbance? You ask them that. <laughs> I asked today and it was told to me that it's, Enough that I open my mouth. <laughs> Sometimes it's enough. Well, then these, then this kind of association you don't want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're in Austria now. Yes, we are in Austria. Saraswati goes to school. Hmm. Okay. And you're near the you you visit you're going to the temple when you can. Yes, this weekend we will go and uh, then from twenty one for six days we will stay in Simhachalam. Good, good, good. Well, then you'll have more. Uh, Krishna Conscious Association. Yeah, we go there for service. They said we would not accept otherwise, uh, but you'll go for service. So mm. you can come. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Mahal. Wish you the best. Thank you. Devotees, any questions? Uh, Vivek Prabhu, you can go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is when I read uh, and hear about what Krishna has mentioned, the definition of perfection, it looks like too far in this life and uh, feel like uh, maybe just one way we can do this is uh, the definition of perfection that keeping Krishna happy or like pleasing Krishna, whatever way in the current situations, whatever way we have, is that something like the right way to develop and to progress on this journey? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. I'm trying to please Krishna, yeah. That's the process of devotional service. It's mentioned in the second chapter of the first canto that the all of activities in devotional services, um, uh, Hari Toshanam, Hari means Krishna, Toshanam means to, to please. All activities in devotional service should be engaged or geared towards pleasing the Supreme Personality of God. But if you, if you have this idea that you can never reach perfection, then you won't, you will never reach perfection. <laughs> that negative idea will stop you from, from reaching perfection. But if you 
if you say I can do it by the mercy of the Lord, I can't do it by myself, but I can do it with Krishna's mercy, then you open up the, the door to perfection. Because the soul by nature is perfect anyway. So. so you might look at your present situation, but you're looking at it in a material way. And therefore, when you see it in the material way, you, you evaluate this is what it is and this is what it's not. But that's, that's just external. No matter what ashram you're in, whatever situation is, you can reach perfection if you follow the process carefully mm -hmm. and develop attraction for Krishna. That's the idea. That attraction has to turn into attachment. If we're attracted, but we don't get attached to Krishna, then we'll only make progress up to a certain point. We have to become attached to Krishna. And that attachment comes by association with devotees and it comes by hearing about Krishna. Thanks Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. But may I ask one question here Guru Maharaj? When we say attraction and attachment, um, what exactly it means really? Because it may have different, different meaning here. Yeah, our, our, well, you have attraction, you have attachment to your family members, right? Yes. Yeah, and that, that attachment is based on some attraction also. So you apply the same principle to Krishna. That's it. Your family members seem to be closer to you than Krishna because you can interact with them. You have a certain relationship with them. You are duty bound to have a certain responsibility towards them. All these things help build build uh, attachment, and then gradually, when one gets the results of that, the the, attr the attraction becomes stronger and stronger. So getting attached to Krishna means hearing about Krishna. If we don't hear about Krishna, it's very hard to become attracted to Krishna. Because he's all attractive. That's why he's called Krishna. And that's the meaning of the word. And that's, uh, which, that's what I experience in my relationship with the devotees is they uh, they don't spend enough time hearing about Krishna. They spend more time doing things rather than spending time hearing hearing about the Lord. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's really really good. Uh learnings and take away from today because I should not limit myself and I think that reminds me one thing that if you ask from Krishna, Krishna give me something, it's just we are trying to constrain ourselves with that limit of material thinking but if you say just engage me whatever way you want to I think that's the way that mood should be so thank yeah. you Guru Maharaj thank When Krishna is pleased, the door to the door to Krishna consciousness becomes wide open If, if you talk about somebody, somebody, and you talk about them in a very wonderful way, they, uh, they become happy automatically. So when you talk about Krishna, when you hear about Krishna, he becomes happy. <laughs> yes. He's not proud, but he knows his position. <laughs> so when you glorify him, when you hear about him, when you tell others about him, he becomes happy. And when he becomes happy, then you, you're, you're blessed with knowledge of Krishna and you're, and you're blessed with detachment from more and more of the material 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Sudha. Sudha Mataji, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, uh, Dhanat Pranam Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Um, wonderful class today. Uh, so many striking points to me that I really need to learn and apply. Um, so, Maharaj, I have a question like um, uh, on faith, like uh, um, uh, uh, not a question that I really need to work on that. Uh, you mentioned, Maharaj, like faith in process, uh, faith in your ability and faith in Krishna's mercy. And I personally feel I really lack I have faith in process, but I lack a lot, uh, like, you know, faith in my ability, like faith in myself, like I cannot really be a very good devotee. So how can I really improve in that uh, area, Maharaj? I do spend some time reading books every day just to keep up with that, but still, like, I'm not uh, able to really have a, um, like, a faith in my ability. Well, the process is continuous. If we practice over a period of time, those qualities that we're trying to develop will, will manifest. But the soul by nature is pure. So every soul has pure love of God. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Saru Kabunai, Sravanare Siddhi Chitte, Kodiye Udoi. In the hearts of all living entities, pure love, love for Krishna is automatically there. It's not something brought from the outside. It's not something gained by any kind of activity. It is already manifested. So all souls have pure love for Krishna. So awakening that means revealing that spiritual nature. So if we stay fixed in the process gradually, it starts to manifest. It's just like when the darkness, whatever degree of darkness is there, that's how much less the light is there. As we remove the darkness, the light becomes greater. Or as we, what we say, as we bring in the light, the darkness also goes. So it's a process. It's not something that happens since, since, since as soon as you do it. it, takes continuous. So usually it takes one full lifetime of dedication and devotional service to reach the stage of your devotional service and sometimes it'll take two lives sometimes Prabhupada said usually for most devotees it takes two lives the first life we reach a certain level where we when, we when we leave the body we go to a planet where Krishna is having his pastimes and we can associate with Krishna there somewhere in the material world on that planet with Krishna and then after that life we go back to Godhead but generally it says it takes two lives but for those who are very qualified and devoted and have full knowledge and dedication, they can do it in one life. So. But the thing is, you're making if, if you're not if you look back to where you were a year ago and to see where you are now, obviously we made some progress. And you'll mm -hmm. see this this principle works. If you from a year from now, you look back to where you are now, you'll see that you actually grow even more. So for some it's slow and for others it's less slow or a little, little quicker. And there are things that can move you along the path very fast. And what moves you along the path very fast is, you know, uh, senior association, that's where you move fastest. And that's why it always says one should seek out the association of pure devotees and look for opportunities to serve them. That's that's the fast track back. When you see the example of Prahlad Maharaj. I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not Prahlad Maharaj, but Narada Muni. Narada Muni was simply a five-year-old boy. His mother was a maid servant who worked in a hotel assisting the guests as they came. And so he used to assist his mother in helping with the guests. So this was the Chaturmasya rainy season. 
And during India's time, then the sadhus don't travel during any time. They usually find some place. So many sadhus came to that place where his mother was working. And they came and she served them nicely. And he also helped. But he became attracted to them. And he used to listen to their discourses. And at one time, he received the remnants of their prasadam. And by doing that, he became fully purified. His mother left the body, and then he was all alone. And then as a young boy, he traveled. And in that life, Krishna actually appeared to him and told him, I'm only appearing to you once because you are not perfect. You will never see me again in this life. And then the Lord left. So he was so inspired by the presence of the Lord's appearance that he made his determination to become fully Krishna conscious, but it all started with Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri Hoy, Lava Matta, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. This is in Chaitanya Charitamrita. A one moment's association with the pure devotee can purify one from all material attachments, all material contaminations. So Sadhu Sangha is very strong. So then here we go. So you might say, well, I have had Sadhu Sangha, but I can see I'm not there yet. Okay, so here's the example. And this is was, re, was given to Srila Prabhupada. When asked by his devotees that, you know, they had so much association with him, many of them had regular association, but they still felt they weren't on the, on the platform yet. So they asked him that. So Prabhupada responded, he said, when the wood is wet, he used an example, when the wood is wet, you can't start your fire. But therefore you have to dry out the wood. And once the wood is dry, then it immediately bursts into flames. So in the same way, the drying process is the, is the continuous hearing of the glories of the Lord and the process of devotional service. So we continue to associate with advanced devotees hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. As that becomes stronger and stronger, gradually we'll reach a stage where perfection is attained. So um, this is the formula, senior association and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is the fast track and the recommended process for going back home and back to Godhead. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, so Maharaj, uh, just uh, for my understanding, so the uh, the faith in like uh, my abilities that is due to the darkness in my heart, that's due to my material contamination. So by senior association, by regular, um, um, hearing and chanting from senior associations so I can get over it. Yeah, quickly. Mm -hmm. As we say, it's a, it's a fast process depending on how much faith you have in that association and how much you keep regular hearing and chanting. These are the things that will move you quickly along the path. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, uh, just one more um, question, clarification. Like, uh, um, now that like we have a COVID, so association, like if I listen, um, like um, YouTube, the lectures, that should also be okay, like, uh, or the personal association um, is more effective? I think it's all right. We're, we're, we're using the virtual media for association, but it's not the same. We should seek out personal association. So, should try to go to some holy place, some temple, some satsang, some kirtan, some programs, and get association. I don't think we should stop that in fear and the fear process that's been given to us by the secular society. We shouldn't listen to that thing that we can't be together. It's, it's false <laughs> and it has no basis. 
and I can I can attribute that on my personal level. I'm here in Slovenia for and this area for about a year now, more than a year. And I've had regular association with devotees. The temple is right here. We have programs. We have kirtans. We have yajyas. We have morning programs. And the devotees are going out on Harinam. So the temple is vibrant. It's active. It's going on. And, and it's not that a lot of people are coming, but the devotees that are involved are, uh, they don't have a moment of time. They're, they're always engaged in devotional service. So a lot, they're happy and they're fixed. So we have to plug into something that is vibrant and be a part of it. If you can start it in your neighborhoods with the devotees that are available there, having group gatherings with a few families coming together, hearing and chanting, that's also as powerful as any other form of association. All you have to do is read from Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, um, chant the holy names and have kirtan and uh, distribute Krishna Prashadam. And that, if you do that regularly, that will, you know, push you forward quickly on the path of devotional service. That, you know, this lack of association that we accept because of this scare tactic that is being pushed upon us is artificial. Mm -hmm. It's not, we should seek out association. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Definitely I'll do that. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Any more questions or comments, uh, realizations, devotees? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Not, uh... Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. So um, this is uh, just an experience which I'm sharing uh, right now. Uh, in my family, uh, when with my parents or my relatives, they are uh, they ha they have that uh, bhakti inside them right from I'm seeing that right from my childhood, and that's that's how that came to me, seeing them. But they don't. Uh, believe in uh, uh, associating with one sampraday or you know one one lineage they uh, they they'll just pick up uh, you know good things from uh, uh, many of the sampradays or you know some uh, famous authoritative gurus but they won't attach with uh, get linked with one sampraday so what kind of faith is this? I, I, don't, I don't understand this. Yeah, it's lack of understanding. You have to make a commitment. Just like, you know, when you, when you get married, you make a commitment to, to be with that husband and serve that husband and do everything. Before then, a person might be experiencing life in a larger sense, but once the marriage comes and it gets focused. And when it's focused, then progress is made. So in the same way, we can't be eclectic when, when it comes to spiritual life. You get a little bit from this, a little bit from that, you get a little bit from this. And it's, it doesn't work. You need to focus completely in one particular tradition and one particular spiritual uh, master. Because each spiritual master, each tradition has a particular path, how they enunciate that path. And if you follow it, you get the benefit. You can't go to like four universities at once and expect to get degrees. <laughs> you have to go to one university, and follow their protocol. Yeah, it's just, it's just laziness and a certain sense of lack of faith, that's all. Because they haven't explored something thoroughly enough, they just want to just go here and there. But it doesn't work. I've, I know devotees who have done that in the past, tried different things and explored, but they have a little knowledge of everything, but they don't have any fixed devotion anywhere. 
And the knowledge is supposed to lead to devotion. That's the purpose of knowledge. And when devotion comes, then knowledge actually re becomes realized knowledge. So commitment is the principle of uh, what we say, uh, progress. They have to commit themselves to one particular path. So Maharaj, how I am understanding this thing is like, as I told them that if you are uh, uh, you know, taking up certain, certain things from uh, different sampradays or different authoritative people, then you are just trying to uh, accept what is there in your mind from a particular person. I mean, from yeah, a particular authority. Yeah. yeah, you're looking for something to satisfy your mind. Yeah. Yeah, so that is your own uh, personal satisfaction that doesn't come uh, under accepting, you know, a sampraday or a philosophy properly. Uh, when you take the word disciple, which word, what is the etymological root word for the word disciple? Surrender to no. your... No, yeah, but what is the the same the same word disciple? What is the what is the word root word for disciple? Same word. We've kept one or two letters different. Okay, Shida Shridhi Mataji is helping me. She's saying discipline. That's it. Ah, okay. And they don't have any discipline, so they can't be there. You can't really call them disciples of anything. It's disciples of their own mind. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for this clarification. Yeah. I, I hope I can make some, you know, uh, try to make them understand this way. You stay strong in your own practice and and they, they will start seeing the results because... Sometimes it's a little difficult because, you know, uh, at, at my age, understanding, making understand uh, something or a philosophy and, you know, at the age of 60s or 70s, you make somebody understand a philosophy. So... It's not, po it's not possible. That's why Prabhupada said, I started this movement with young people. He says the old people they, they can't change. <laughs> yes, yes, Maharaj. Uh, I do and like that. Yeah, I do face that thing uh, when I try to make my parents or my relatives understand this. Yeah, they can't change. There's an old saying in in, in America: you can't try to, to try to teach old dogs new tricks. It's just. The old dog knows its old tricks and that's all. It can't learn anything else. <laughs> but if your dog is new, we can teach him all kinds of tricks. <laughs> yeah, I just feel that the only uh, don't worry, don't, don't yeah, just be just be good at just be an example in your own. Don't try to change them. If they learn something from you, they might see that there is something good there. <laughs> Mm, Otherwise, yes, you just yes. waste your time. You just waste your time trying to change the rules. Yes, I think the only thing that can be done is like Im implementing and uh, staying, uh, you know, firm on my practice. Right. Exactly. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we can, uh, Sri Dev, you have a question? Yes, please, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. And uh, I humbly request your, your uh, bearing with me as I ask this question because it's a little uh, difficult for me, myself, to broach this topic. But it's not just uh, my concern. I have seen the same situation with my god sisters of uh, running into difficulties uh, in the association of devotees you know in this purport it says faith is increased in the association of devotees i think for some of us the challenge is to keep our faith <laughs> when we come across <laughs> certain devotees 
uh, are uh, maybe because we are all female bodies and maybe because authorities don't treat us well and so we start losing faith these people have been around 20 years 30 years they are going through the motions they show up every morning they do their thing but they're so cruel and so mean and hard hearted and unempathic towards our situation or our uh, you know instead of being helpful or kind or gentle uh, the opposite happens and then you start wondering my gosh you know what is happening here this is gone or what and uh, of course devotees on individual levels we find many wonderful devotees and many kind and helpful devotees but sometimes your faith in the institution gets very shaken when you have such experiences especially with leaders, authority figures who can even exploit and abuse you. So I was just wondering how to seek the right association and how to protect ourselves from wrong association. So our faith is not shaken. Thank you. Yeah, well, you answered the question. You have to seek out that association that is inspiring. That's why sometimes devotees go away and they just create their own little sanghas among themselves and then they relegate their Krishna consciousness to that. Yes, there's, sometimes we find there's, there's those in the position of authority that don't know how to manage others. So that is a science, how to set up an authority which is both inspirational to the devotees and uh, and that's the whole devotee care system that we have established. It's been established for the last almost 20 years now, started at the beginning of the century, how to care for devotees. So then again, what are the elements? What do what devotees need in order to make progress? What are the authorities put in place in order to help them? So there's systems that have to be adopted. There's general kindness and care on the personal level that we exhibit in relationship to our, each other in our day-to-day -day activities, but that doesn't suffice in order to inspire devotees. You need a system of care. And, uh, and so a system has to be placed in every temple, how to care for devotees. Like that. That's the most important thing because, because as we see, when devotees are happy, they do wonderful service. Yeah, so the idea is to make the devotees happy <laughs> and make sure they get everything they need. So coming from that side, and if you find that it's not there in the association you're, you're getting, then you might have to move away from that association and create something separately. Um, or tolerate it. If you're strong enough, sometimes you can tolerate it. And go on in your own devotional service. But the best thing to do is in, in a less than perfect situation is to make a, so friendships with other devotees and keep that association foremost and resonate with that. And then you find happiness and success and progress more easily. And sometimes devotees, they clash, not so much because of uh, issues, but because of personalities. There are certain personalities that don't resonate with other personalities. <laughs> it's like getting married, you know? It says when you get married, you, you should, two things have to be there, nature and likeness. Your similar likes and similar nature. Same with friendship. Friendship has to be based on likeness and nature. That's in the third canto. It's an elaborately described. So yeah, so uh, when we find that people's natures clash, for, for persons who are senior, they can somehow or other get over that simply by uh, going to a higher platform of Krishna consciousness. But for those who are not so advanced, they become affected by it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for that kind. Mm -hmm.
so you have to find association on in some some level. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, we are past one hour, Guru Maharaj. Um, okay. What is any questions or comments, final, um, before we close? Well, there may be one more. Yes, yes. Okay, we have time. <laughs> As you like, Maharaj. I'm sorry, I don't want to let you go. No, we can waive the time. Okay, okay, okay. That's... Uh, that's um um i don't know how to say it in english um it's a, it's just a just a cliche yeah you're, you're coming from the time waiver we can wave yeah. we can wave the time meaning meaningful cliche so <laughs> earlier earlier you mentioned the uh the knowledge of a devotee um would you like to say something about the renunciation as well how that um how that how's that um where, where, knowledge where is leads, transcendental knowledge leads to renunciation and renunciation leads to bhakti that's the progress the progress as you develop knowledge you develop the mood of renunciation more and as renunciation develops it, it, it its fruit is actually the activities of the bhakti renunciation means to give up those things which are unfavorable for Krishna consciousness and to accept those things that are favorable. And of course, the more we renounce any kind of material attachments or material uh, ideas, then uh, we develop more and more knowledge. Knowledge and enunciation get, get, a, get us a foothold in devotional service. That's explained in Nectar Devotion. But once one gets a foothold, that means once one is engaged nicely in devotional service, then knowledge and renunciation are automatically following bhakti in that. But preliminary, it's required. So it's important. That's when we, when devotees come, we teach them the philosophy by giving regular classes and setting up programs for discussion on different topics. That knowledge builds and then one starts to see uh, the futility of material activities and the, the benefit of spiritual activities, and then the renunciation starts to develop or grow. And as that grows, it, it becomes fixed in the execution of one's service and devotion. So you see the connection? <laughs> yeah, 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 I do. Thank you. Um, what is, how do we tell can we tell bhakti by knowledge or by renunciation or both? Mm, both, but mostly more, more by renunciation. Because there are people who are, they have knowledge, but their knowledge is too preliminary. It's just theoretical. And therefore, they haven't got to the stage of renunciation. Vairagya, Vidya, Nidja, Bhakti, Yoga. It's Vairagya and Vidya, but Vairagya is... is is the goal of vidya so that kind of vidya without renunciation is that dry knowledge yeah it's dry it's it's uh, it's just basic theor theoretical understanding that's all it hasn't reached any level of realization it hasn't taken hold in a, in practical application there are people who know the books but they don't live the books <laughs> yeah included <laughs> no i didn't say that in that way <laughs> no, I, I take it personally but that's just me it's, we have we, yeah. we can say we can say it's a matter of degree that's all but actually it's it's quite difficult like the example of uh, uh pundari kavijanidi and um, a lot of other devotees who um Apparently, even Maharaj Yudhisthira, who apparently had everything. So how do we tell their, their renunciation? And they were... How much, well they're, they're how much they're engaged in devotional service? 
Well, but devo engagement in devotional service can be very subtle and might not be recognized so easily. I mean, it's easy when, when one sees you, okay, you know, you're in saffron, you, have, you, you hold danda like that, and you no, don't you, have... You, you observe the activities of the person. But then, then that you... person... Sorry to interrupt, but then that person is like a, like a householder, has a huge kingdom or a business, and, and is engaged with a lot of people, just like Pundarika Vijaniti was, or Maharaj Yudhishthir. Then it's not so easy to recognize this renunciation. No, it's not for those who are very advanced, but for those who are not so advanced, who are mixing these two together, you can see in what proportion they're, they're attached. Are they more attached to their external uh, uh, amenities that they have developed or responsibilities, or are they more attached to their execution of devotional service? Do they sacrifice their spiritual practice for material gain? or do they keep steady in devotional service and take the responsibility of whatever they have achieved, whatever they have taken on in material life. So a person's steadiness in their execution of devotional service is kind of like a barometer for you know, understanding the level of their advancement. And the symptoms that they exhibit, because if you're if you're engaged in devotional service and you're not practicing humility, tolerance, patience, pridelessness, kindness towards others, then you're really not, you really haven't understood the process. Right, yes, yes. Yes, even adherence to duty, isn't it? Yeah, adherence. Uh, what do you mean in that sense? Well, um, Let's say Maharaj Yudhishthir, the first thing when he uh, took over the kingdom was to set up the, uh, the Yagya and to unite the kingdom as a king, right. so, like, like that. And just adherence to duty, no, no, matter, no, matter, no matter what kind of duty yeah. it is. Yeah, so we also have our duties that are parallel to devotional activities. Yeah. That are called, that's called gona bhakti, no, or the devotees that are something. It, it's parallel, but it's not what we say direct. <laughs> but it becomes more direct as we become fixed in our in the activities of devotional service. Yeah, like morning shower. Like what? A morning shower. <laughs> well, you have yeah. That's necessary. Cleanliness is part of the principle. Yeah, I think Shilabhakti Natakur mentions that in Sri Chaitanya Shakshamrita as uh, the example of Gauna Bhakti. Yeah. In the, in the morning show. Yeah, and eating, eating, eating prasadam that is wholesome and healthy. Oh, yeah. Not just eating, not, not just eating anything. Yeah. Yeah. Regulated lifestyle. Yeah, regulation is yeah, allows the mind to stay fixed. Without regulation, the mind will carry one to different areas of life without any without any warning. We couldn't wind up in any other place. If you're regulated, then you're fixed on the activities that you're performing. So then this renunciation actually goes very wide. In the um, in the process of daily lifestyle, it actually can include a lot of uh, Vedic knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our path is called uh, is called uh, Vairagya. We are on the path of Vairagya, which is supported by Vidya. Yeah, yeah interesting. And that's Lord Chaitanya taught that. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya made that verse. Vairagya vidya nija bhakti yogam sikartam purusha. And then this, can't remember the rest of the verse. But he glorified the process of devotional service as taught by Lord Chaitanya. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna. 
Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you for your association and time uh, this morning. Um, very nice topic and very nice question answer session. A lot of things uh, to learn. Um, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, all devotees, for participating. Um, so, Guru Maharaj, no. um, I think we can end the call here. It's um, uh, 11.22 a.m. here. The, so, um, tomorrow, can you announce tomorrow's yes. topic? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, tomorrow is uh, the uh, Guru Maharaj class will be with uh, Bhakti Sangha Japa group, uh, Charlotte devotees. And uh, the topic is uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, fifth canto, sixth chapter, and third verse, 5.6.3. Time? Time, um, it's uh, 12, 12 uh, 20 p.m. UK time, and it will be uh, 7 20 Eastern, 7 20 a.m. Eastern. And there is a different link for that. Yes, goodness. yeah, yes, there is a different link, and it's available in the Google Calendar, and uh, even I can post on the WhatsApp group too. Uh, Thank, okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll Thank see you, you all tomorrow. That that uh, that verse five six three is all about the mind. So if you have any interest in, in hearing about the nature of the mind, so that's the tomorrow's topic. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj.